If you'd have paid attention to me in school, you'd understand that it's not all about gunfights and car chases. Fire up the roof. That was brilliant. So how did you guys, after, you know, the success of Shaun of the Dead, how do you, where did you guys decide to go with the action film? Like, why was that, you know, the, the next comedy for you guys to work on? There hadn't been any British cop films in 30 years and there were no British action films and we decided that this was a void that needed to be filled and um, we were sick of British gangster films and we thought it was time that the Brit British Bobby got badass. It was a big old gap in the market, you know, and we wanted to make an action movie but we realised that we, you know, we were living in the UK so we had to sneak over the Atlantic, steal something of yours, the action film, and take it back to our little Come village on. setting. Yes, Mr Staker, um, we'll do everything we can. Can you describe it to me? It's about uh, two foot tall, um, long, slender neck. Yeah. Kind of orange and black bill. Anything else? Well, it's a swan. But you guys watched, you know, the Die Hards and the Point oh, yeah. Break when you were kids, so you were fans of, of the genre already? Very we're of so, that, yeah. that delicate age where watching Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, Robocop, The Last Boy Scout on VHS affected us in a very profound way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so when when how how do you think it's going to react? You know, the UK audiences versus the American audience. Have you have you kind of gotten a? Well, a we've feel had a from lot. It? We've had a lot of screenings around the nation already. Previous screenings, and the American audiences laugh in exactly the same places. If anything, there's bits that they laugh at even more. Like anything to do with Point Break seems to bring the house down, which is good. Yeah, I know that was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. And so. us too. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you know because we've taken effectively an American style of cinema, you know, the action cop thriller. Yeah. People recognize it here even more, you know, they're seeing themselves up there on the screen, but in a different kind of way. So I think uh, certainly some of the audiences we've experienced here in America, it's, it, they've been even louder, yeah. which is great. Oh, the power of Skull. Where on earth did you get these? Found them. You found them? And what is this? Sea mine. Sea mine. Well, Mr. Webley, this is an extremely dangerous collection. It's a wonder nobody's been hurt before. Nah, just a lot of junk. Do you have a favorite scene that you guys worked on that really stands out from... In Hot Fuzz? Mm -hmm. I think shooting the, I mean, some of those scenes that were really tough to... Usually the, the scenes that I'm proudest of are the ones that are the toughest to shoot. But I like, um, you know, the shooting the shootout in the town square was pretty, was pretty good fun. Yeah. The, all the action was great. It was, it was great to be an action hero. Yeah. and know that, you know, you were the baddest ass in the world. Because you've never been offered the action role before? No, I'm a, you know, faintly podgy Englishman. I, I, <laughs> I, was, in, I was in, of course, Mission Impossible 3. You right. probably remember me. Right here, right here. Bend you down. Huh? But I was the little typing <laughs> IT man guiding right. Tom Cruise through the streets of Shanghai. I wanted to be Tom Cruise. So now you are. So we made what off you, us. Um, what were some of your lines in Mission Impossible 3? Turn left, Ethan. Brilliant. Things like that. It was brilliant. That's a lot of action. That's a lot of action. Yeah, and also, it was a great scene, yeah. but I was on the wrong side of the action fence. I wanted to be there sprinting through the streets of Shanghai with a determined face, like Tom's. Very good, what he said. My, my, here come the fuzz. Got a moustache. I know. <laughs>